Hey eighth grade, I hope you're doing well. Last week we worked on insects in four different perspectives using pencil and shading to add value and dimension. This week we're gonna be drawing our insects in different types of art movements. And so I will post some links of different art movements. This week we're gonna see how I took two different art movements, applied different characteristics from that art movement to my insect drawing. So this is my expectation for you. I know you guys are up for the challenge. It may be a little difficult, but use your artist's eye. You got this, okay? Let's get started. So for this video, eighth grade, we're gonna be focusing on neo-impressionism and Baroque style of artwork. So for the first square, what I'm going to be doing is taking this B in this perspective, drawing it in the style of Neo-Impressionism, which is just pointillism, or what they call, or what they call divisionism. So the first thing I want to do is lightly sketch the same perspective that I created to the left of my drawing. I want to lightly sketch the same perspective. So there's my rough sketch next to my reference. And so for Neo-Impressionism, you really want to focus on building up small dots. It's for pointillism, so it's basically made up of tiny little dots. The eyes, the feelers, the outline of the wing, and different aspects of my bee's stripes. What you want to do, and I'll show you on the scratch paper, is build up your points to be super clumped together. So the whole point of pointillism is to be made up of small individual dots. I'm not jamming the pencil like this because I have little control over it. Instead, I am placing the dots carefully next to each other to kind of build up dimension and depth. So we see Right now I've built up a lot of shadow. This dark concentrated area could be the bee's eye. So instead of using pencil to build up my points, I'm actually gonna go in with colored pencil to build dimension and color. Pointillism works really well if you have nice sharpened pencils. So make sure to sharpen your colored pencils ahead of time. Keep in mind, this is where your reference picture will really come into play because you're gonna be using it for the color pigmentation. I'm gonna to start to build up the lightest color because it's the easiest to go over. And again, starting with light points because the fur closest to the neck has both light points and dark points. I'm not coloring, I'm still leaving gaps in between my dots, but just building up the color. So there we have our nice yellow dots. I'm gonna go in with a tan and start to darken some of those areas. My bee's head is a lot darker than this part on its chest, so I'm going to go in with tan this time. Then I'm going to take a couple spots of yellow just to brighten it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of dark brown to darken where the shadow is. So I see my bees starting to take form a little bit. So I also have this dark ratio where the wing comes from. So again, I wanna put dots really close together to build up that shape. And then on this side as well. So I have the beginnings of my B. I also wanna take the dark brown and use it for my eyes.
you can see I'm really building up that tones and shades. So now for the feelers, again, since it's a straight line, I know it's tempting to just want to draw a straight line, but we have to go in with points close together to create the illusion. Now I'm just going to continue drawing my B in this pointillism style, you're going to see it come to life. So there you go, 8th grade. It's our B, same perspective as the partner, but drawn in pointillism, which is just neo-impressionism. So I would also want to give this a background. Maybe I'd put it against a green. Use various shades of green. And I'll be doing this throughout my picture to build a nice, beautiful background where my bee can stand out. So that's Neo-Impressionism. Now we're going to move on, and I'm going to do this perspective of the bee. Again, sketch it out, and then I'm going to be doing Baroque style of art, which was more classical art, used a lot of interesting English clothing, very royal, very regal, and dark tones. So that's what I'm going to think when I start to create my B. Start with an outline. So now that I have my sketch, I'm going to use two artists' work to inspire how I'm going to turn this into a Baroque style artwork. So the first one that I'm going to be using is The Calling of St. Matthew by Caravaggio. And so he used a lot of dark colors, a lot of interesting clothing for the time, right? Like funny hats with feathers in it, big puffy shirts, and the men wore tights. I'm also going to be using a painting by Rembrandt called The Night Watch, which again, they had these funny vestments like giant fans around their necks, big feathers in their hats, and also tights with boots. So thinking kind of Robin Hood-esque. So I'm going to turn my B into that. So I'm going to give him a funny hat, um, that funny fan around his neck. I might give him some boots on his feet. So it's really about you having fun with turning these creations into the similar styles of these famous art movements. So again, using pencil to sketch first, just in case if I make a mistake.
So there, I've got a hat. I've got the fan around his neck. I also want to give him a funny shirt with some puffy sleeves. And then they went tight, closer to where the foot is. And I'll do another puffy sleeve because he has two quote unquote arms. And then this will be his leg with the funny little boot. A prominent factor of it, so like Baroque had these funny outfits and shading in both dark contrasting colors. And then for his back leg, I'm going to give him one of those tiny little boots. And so there we go. So I kind of built him up to be a little different than your average bee, right? In the style of Baroque. So I'm going to play a lot with the shadows and the colors. It was a very dark and ominous picture. This is going to be my color palette. Right? And I'm going to use black to cast a lot of shadows because it was a dark, ominous, very dramatic type of artwork. So I'm going to make his hat very dark blue. hat blue so again I'm thinking dramatic so I really want to build up the shadow I'd still color my B the same so we need to give him a nice bright face I want to think shadows, lots and lots of shadows. So shadow from the hat, coming in with that tan color. I could even put some black hairs going throughout just again to build up that shadow, the dark ominous feeling. The neck piece would be done. Great. And then I want to go in with black. there he has a neck piece. I'm going to continue to color it in the style of bro inspired from Caravaggio and from Rembrandt.
So in the style of Baroque, they did a lot of windowsills, or I tried my best to build up a wooden windowsill, and I can even build up the shadows in the glass a little bit more so it looks a little dirtier than maybe normal glass would to really cast that shadow. And then I also included a lot of black to create that dramatic look. I think my bee looks pretty awesome. For this project, this is what we're doing. We're picking two of the movements. So I did Neo-Impressionism and Baroque. So even though I haven't completed this one with a background, I do want you to fill it in with a background. So remember, your perspective bug and then the art movement, your perspective bug and then the art movement. I hope you get inspired by these art movements and you really dissect them for what they are because they're very fantastic and they created different dimensions into what we see as art today and how artists view it. Pick your art movement, transform your bugs into something interesting and exciting. I can't wait to see your artwork 8th grade and have a good day. Happy creating!